Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the MiG-29A and we're looking at air-to-air -air radar and air-to-air -air radar missiles. Today we're not looking at the IRST or infrared guided missiles. Let's start first with controls I suggest you have bound for this. So if we start in the category that says left wall definitely a good idea to have external store switch inboard and outboard selected the inboard will allow us access to use the radar guided missiles and the four outer stations can be selected via outboard next let's go to our weapon control panel it's a good idea to have weapons control system modes selector knob bound the various options especially radar that's the option we're going to be using today and there's several options as you can see Next, weapon control system span knob. It's a good idea to bind something to that to increase and decrease the rheostat, and we'll go over the function of that shortly. Zone switch, the ability to move our radar left or right and centralize it. I would suggest binding that. All of these functions, you can actually click the control in the cockpit, but that's going to be very difficult to do while flying, obviously. Next, on to our stick we need the ability to break lock button that's obviously to lose a radar track as well as that to actually fire a missile we'll need to push and hold missile trigger fire and our target acquisition symbol in a nato plane that would be called a tdc target designated cursor you'll need to be able to move it aft forward left right and to depress it next we're going to move on to our radar panel i'm doing this in no particular order there there are four modes that you're going to want to change between in the mode select knob here auto close combat head up and pursuit so i would suggest binding those or counterclockwise and clockwise to turn the actual knob next radar elevation we may want to point our radar up or down so have that and that bound clockwise and counterclockwise as well as that we want the ability to be able to switch between track while scan and range while search that guy there is track while scan that is range while search Next, we're going to go to throttle there because we need the ability to actually lock onto a target, push and hold lock on there. And finally, in terms of controls, a bit weird, but we have a PUS31 panel. It's a good idea to have this one bound. Weapon control system lock switch friend or foe. We can cycle between them whether we may want to lock a hostile as standard or change it so that we can lock a friend. That's actually quite useful. And to our cockpit, let's look at our scenario. What I've done is I've set us here at 16,000 feet pointing west coming towards us and then they will turn around and go away from us are a series of c-130s some are friendly some are hostile as well as a warbird there at different altitudes and because this is an easy way of testing out the radar i'll put this mission linked in the video description if you want to download it and do the same thing if you're going to use it viewers i suggest you use this button if you go in ui layer here active pause it will allow our aircraft to not move but all of the functions in the aircraft will still work so let's get started. First, our weapons selector knob here. We're going to be using radar only today, obviously. We mentioned the anticipated wingspan of the target. We can change that in this rear stack here. The manual says that small is around the size of a cruise missile. Medium is an average size fighter. Large is a large bomber. It's best if you don't know what you're going to attack to go with medium. I've not seen this make any difference to my missiles so far, but in the future it may. So it's probably a good idea to get into the habit of changing it. Once we've changed this mode selector here to radar, we will have the relevant symbology on the HUD here. As well repeated with slight additional information on our heads down repeater here. Now, at the moment, the radar is not turned on, so we're going to turn it on. We can have it off, we can have it dummy, or we can have it illuminating, and illuminating means on. We know it's on because we've got the Cyrillic symbology here. Also, obviously, we can see all of the targets. This is obviously a top-down B-scope. That means we are positioned here, and we're looking that way there. If I just pause it, in terms of range, we have zero miles there and 50 nautical miles there. It can be changed between miles and kilometers, as well as knots and kilometers per hour in the special options menu, which you can access from the main menu. Select the MiG-29A fulcrum, and you can change the cockpit there. English, Imperial, or Russian metric. The first thing I want to show is that we can actually change that range scale by 
by unpan here this guy here known as radar mode select knob there are four radar modes auto which is the one we've got here there's close combat there's head on and there's pursuit in auto as we saw it's 50 miles this is general purpose if you don't know whether your hostile is definitely coming towards you or going away from you so as well as changing the range scale to 50 miles it sets the prf pulse repetition frequency to an interleave mode most suitable for picking up targets coming and going if we definitely knew that the targets were coming then we would go to a head-on mode so we would change it to head on there First of all, that extends the range up to 75 nautical miles in this case and also changes the PRF most suitable for picking up incoming targets. If they were going away from us, you guessed it, we go to Pursuit, we're chasing them. Changes the range scale and the PRF to most suitable to picking up a target that you're trailing. So let's just put it back to Auto and we'll go over Close Combat in a minute because that's a bit different. Other symbology are azimuth. As I said, we're there facing that way. That's 50 miles, obviously. And you can see the various aircraft that we looked at earlier. In terms of azimuth coverage, our radar as standard can cover 45 degrees. So that's 22 and a half degrees left, 22 and a half right. But we can extend that by moving the radar deliberately left with scan zone left as we bound earlier. Or we can go to the right or we can go to the center, giving us an absolute maximum possible coverage of 67 degrees in terms of elevation of what we're covering you have six degrees three degrees above the center of the antenna three degrees below the center of the antenna the antenna as standard is going straight and level with the aircraft so even if we pitch the aircraft up it will go straight and level towards the horizon if that makes sense from that datum we can tilt it further up and that's this knob here and obviously we set the elevation knob in our controls we can go up to 10 notches up or six notches down each notch increases or decreases the elevation by six degrees so a total of 60 degrees up or negative 36 or 37 degrees down and this is a really important thing to think about because in NATO planes, rather than changing the angle that you're tilting the radar up and down, you ask it to look for a certain altitude. Russian planes are the other way round. You tell it the angle to tilt the radar up and down. If you want to know what altitude that's going to cover, you have to use maths. We worked out roughly that for every notch, i.e. every six degrees you tilt it up or down, you are aiming the center of your scan zone 500 feet up or down per mile. You know how many miles your target is away from you there. Therefore, you can work out the increment or decrement of coverage of your radar. So, maths is the order of the day. If not, you're just gonna have to do it manually by trial and error, by slowing the radar up or down to try and find your target. Now, speaking of targets, if I pause there as not to burn any more time, each target is shown by three dots. Three dots is a hostile. Three dots with three dots below is a friendly, as determined by the onboard IFF system in the jet. At the moment, IFF is automatic. That may change later, we'll just have to see. Just to prove to you quickly, viewers, I know it's all obvious stuff, but what happens if we change the radar elevation, no longer to be able to see those targets, you can see I'm pointing 60 degrees up and they've obviously disappeared. Bring it back down and you can see them. Now, six degrees doesn't sound like a much, but it's actually, when you're dealing with tens of miles, quite a lot of coverage. So you won't need to do a huge amount of slewing radar up and down, generally speaking. Another thing to point out is regards that elevation, if I just pause there, you can see a bit more information in our repeater here. If I were to slew my radar up or down, you can see a slew mark changing there. As well as that, purely out of interest, we have a bar counter there. Remember how a mechanical radar in the 1980s works. It scans right bar, left bar, right bar, left bar, four times to create a four bar scan. And you can see the number of bar that you're on. You don't really need to know that, but just shows that it's working. Now, another limitation of the radar is that sometimes you know targets are in front of you, but they disappear. You see that guy just disappeared there. That's either he's gone out of radar coverage or he's gone into the speed gate. 
the speed gate filters out any potential aircraft that are going slower than the speed gate is set. The speed gate is hard set on this aircraft so that if they are more than eight nautical miles away from you, if they are moving away or towards us, look at that, there's a guy right there. Wow, that wasn't gonna happen. He's gonna shoot me down. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pause it. <laughs> you, you can see I haven't practiced this. If they're more than eight miles away from us, the target needs to be moving towards or away from us, i.e. closure or escape, at more than 81 knots for it to show up on the radar. If it's less than 81 knots, i.e. if they're traveling directly 90 degrees to us, then they will not show up on the radar, and this is a normal thing. In 1980s radars, most NATO planes, you can change the speed gate. In this case, I believe it's hard set. If within eight miles, your speed gate is reduced to 27 knots. So if they're below 27 knots, they won't show. If they're more than 27 knots, close your rate or escape rate, they will show. So that talks about how we control our radar, our radar coverage, and what it can see. Next, we're going to try locking up a target. And because that guy is literally about to shoot us down, I suggest we restart the scenario. Here we go again. We're going to pause. We're going to turn ourselves to radar. We're going to have just auto mode here. And that's it. We're ready to go. All we need to do now, viewers, is use our acquisition cursor that we looked at to move our box onto the thing we want to shoot. Then we're going to press and hold the lock on button. If it locks, oh, look at that. It's disappeared. It's gone out of the speed gate. No, it's back press and hold until it locks it if it doesn't lock it then there's a problem and obviously it can't lock it for some reason if it does there we go i have got a lock um, and you can hear that by the tone in terms of symbology here we've moved to a 25 mile range scale here known as a launch zone scale that is the guy's active range from us 20 nautical miles and decreasing the missile we have selected are shown down here stations one stations two which happen to be R27 Cyrillic EP or ER, extended range R27. They've got a dash below them. That means that they are within parameters to fire. That doesn't mean within range to fire. It means that they've got what they need to fire, which in this case is a radar lock. Obviously, you can see we've got our radar lock. I'm just going to pause it at that point to buy myself some more time. In terms of the range scale, you can see that marker shows the maximum launch range of our missile. That is the no escape range where he shouldn't be able to evade our missile if we fire it. And all missiles have a minimum fusing range, and that's it there. We can also see his relative motion of travel travel in comparison to us here he's moving almost straight towards us in case i didn't mention it early here is our cyrillic saying that our radar is on and we're in radar mode our current airspeed our current altitudes in feet our current climb rate zero degrees ten degrees minus ten degrees our roll director indicator here wing wing and tail i'm sure you know all about that more importantly we have the circle known as an aiming circle it's really important to understand that the circle is not superimposed over the hostile like nato jets use instead it's a steering circle our job ideally is to have our cursor which is hard fixed to the pointing direction of our plane into that cursor if you zoom into the cursor you'll see a diamond this is our relative antenna position this is showing that at the moment our antenna is facing pretty much straight forward what does that tell us well it means the hostile is either coming directly towards us or presumably directly away from us if he was for instance diving and it's likely we would see that diamond i.e our relative antenna position diving with him but what we don't see i reiterate is an actual graphical representation of him on the HUD and that's something weird to get used to I must admit and that's pretty much all there is to it so my job at this point is to unpause I'm going to fly so that my cross is within the circle I should see if everything's going straight and he's heading towards me the diamond in the middle and it is and launch, launch. Cyrillic down the bottom says LA launch authority it will be converted to English soon I believe uh, in an upcoming patch Obviously, we're within parameters fire, but we didn't need to wait for that. We can actually fire this missile outside of parameters, so it's just something to bear in mind. I may as well fire right now while pointing in the right direction. I'm going to press and hold missile fire, and obviously, off it goes. It's a semi-active radar homing missile. I need to keep the target locked and nothing else locked until it hits sure it will do ah there's something sorry i just missed it that's so frustrating if you saw there really quickly the other stations suddenly blipped up for a moment and had a dash underneath them what that meant 
is, and those other stations can only be IR guided missiles, was that something, i.e. my IRST bulb here and possibly the sensors on those missiles saw some heat. That heat, as it happens, was the heat from the rocket motor of my missile burning. It was saying, hey, I've seen some heat. These missiles can now be fired. In fact, what you can do is fire this missile, then switch to one of your other missiles and fire it and it will chase your radar missile down. It's a really interesting piece of tech. In fact, I'll just fire it again, just so I can show you. You can see there it's picked up heat. Four, five, six, three, and five can now fire and track that missile, which I won't do. Uh, they are R-73s out of interest. Uh, and when that rocket motor burns out, you'll see they'll disappear. Plus there's no more heat to see. There they go, they're gone. All right, the missile is gonna hit uh, probably only the second missile because firing the second one will stop the first one tracking. Uh, and that's the point to say uh, you must, boom, uh, keep it tracked uh, at all times. There you go. Oh, look at that. I got two hits. Interesting. Uh, that's pretty much all I can show there. I'm going to reset to show the next function. In this case, I want to lock one of those friendlies. Uh, it's a friend and you want to home in on him and I want to lock him. As standard, if I were to move my acquisition cursor box over there and press lock on, it won't work. So you probably guessed it. I go down here. I get rid of my pilot. Right shift and P. And I press that one. From foe to friend. I can now lock friends but not hostile, so I'm going to lock my screen there, I'm going to move that there, I'm going to press and hold lock on, and hey presto, we should be able to lock our friend. Ah, here's one thing, break lock. Obviously, if I want to break that lock, I press break lock, and I can go back to that screen there. The next thing I want to show is close combat mode. It is part of the radar suite, so we've been using auto. Head on and pursuit are going to work exactly the same as auto as far as we're concerned, but close combat is something different. It shows two lines here. It's pretty simple. I'm going to unpause. I'm going to find a target visually, although technically I don't have to do that. Technically I could be in zero visibility at night or whatever, but I need to know roughly where to aim it. And as long as it's within 5.4 nautical miles, I'm going to press and hold lock button, ideally for less than two seconds, or not more than two seconds, I should say, and we'll see if we can get a lock. If I do achieve a lock, then from that point on, it's the same. So I'm just going to have to do a little bit of cheating go in there. He's over there somewhere. I'm afraid my eyes aren't what they used to be, viewers. Oh, there they are. There he is. Right there. So I'm going to press and hold lock. Let's see if we can get him. And that's him. Remember, he won't be superimposed by symbology. So that is where our aiming circle is saying fire, which we're at. So unpause and fire quickly. Off it goes. A lovely job. Everything we've done so far is known as range while search. Next, we're going to show track while scan. They actually call it something different in these jets, but it's basically the same as NATO's track while scan. So let's go and use that. So we're going to move this guy from a lot of these switches by the way viewers are dual purpose they do different things whether you're in an IR mode or a radar mode and that's true here so we in this case in a radar mode we're going from range while search to track while scan so the first thing it's going to do is automatically lock up a target why it automatically locks a target I don't know but if I don't want that target I press acquisition depress and then I can now move it about like normal now I can choose a target. I've decided that one there is the one I want to follow. I'm going to move it to him. I'm going to press and hold acquisition depress. And you can see it's now pseudo locked that guy there. Now this is not a lock that I can fire on because the type of missiles we have in this aircraft require a full range while search type lock. Well actually known as a single target track. This is not a single target track. What this is actually doing is keeping an eye, keeping this guy pseudo locked while still scanning the rest of the area. So it's purely there for situational awareness. So I can keep an eye on this guy, but also keep an eye on his friends or enemies around him. Now I can convert that if I like into a proper single target track by either pressing and holding the lock on button, or I can let his range get within the eight mile marker there and it will automatically lock. Let's see if I can convert him into a lock. He may be too far away, let's see. So I'm pressing and holding lock on, and it's converted it into a lock, and I can go and fire on him like usual. Uh, I believe that's all I've got to show viewers for the radar mode as they are at the moment. Of course, compensation, electronic counter countermeasures, I believe will be added at some point. We've shown beyond visual range. We've shown within visual range using the radar guided missiles. The next thing we'll be tackling probably is the IRST, this guy here, and the IR guided missiles. I hope that was useful and bye bye.